Hello, everyone. We're going to give it a few more seconds to let people pop in. It's like we've got a lot of people joining. It's exciting. Just a few more seconds. All right. Um, hi and welcome. My name is Tiffany Texador and I'm the Senior Director of Marketing at Educate360. And I want to thank you all for joining us today for the webinar Growing Your Career with ITIL with David Cannon from PeopleCert. David is a leading IT service management expert. He's co-authored four ITIL books, uh, has worked in the field as a practitioner, consultant, business executive for over three decades, and is now the head of the America region for PeopleCert. So we are very honored to have him here today. And before I hand it over, um, I'd like to first get a poll, uh, launch a poll for you guys to answer so we can understand a little bit more about the participants. So let's see if I can get that going. Um, and then throughout the session, we encourage you to please um, use the Q&A. Uh, we will have a short Q&A after the presentation, but at any moment, please use the Q&A, add a comment, ask some questions, and if we don't get to it while David is presenting it, we will get to it at the end of the session. And then we'll be sharing a copy of this recording with you after the webinar via email. Um, and so it looks like we've got some participation. Everyone's answering. What is the main objective? I'm going to give it a few more seconds. Okay, go ahead and get those answers in. It's I'm watching the numbers change, and I'm going to go ahead and end it and share. Uh, and it looks like the majority are looking for not only to learn more about ITIL certification options, but also to understand how it applies to organizations. So I think David will give us lots of information on that, as well as guidance on your career and what to expect um, to grow your career with ITIL. So with that, David, I will go ahead and hand it over. Thank you very much, Tiffany. And hi, everybody that's on the, on the webinar and those who will be listening to the recording. Good to be here today, and this is part four of the webinar series, Winning with ITIL, and this particular part is about you and your career. In the previous uh, parts or episodes, if you like, of this webinar, we talked more about what ITIL is, we talked about how to use it within your organization, and we talked about the importance of value and uh, making sure that ITIL is is contributing value or that IT service management is contributing value in your organization. I'll be giving you a link at the end of this webinar for those of you who want to go back and look at some of the other uh, some of the other webinars in the series. Uh, but today's all focused on on you, on me and our careers and how we use ITIL within our careers. Right, so agenda today is, first of all, what are the career paths that ITIL supports? We get a lot of questions about this one. So, um, you know, I, is there a specific career path just uh, using ITIL or does it support other career paths? And what are they and how does it support those? So I'll be talking a bit about that. Then I'd like to look at how to make the choice about which ITIL certification is the right one for you. So if you're facing a choice about which ITIL certification you should be taking or would like to be taking, I'd like to give you some idea or some guidelines about how to make the choice about which certification you should take. Uh, and then, and then too, some of you are going to use uh, this certification in your existing jobs. And I have a few thoughts about how that's going to help you grow your career within the organization that you currently work in. Others of you on the call are using ITIL uh, as as a way to get a new job, and I'd like to I'd like to share a few thoughts about that as well. So let's go in and talk about the career paths specifically. Um, I will I will allow plenty of time at the end of this webinar for questions. I think um, there are always a lot of questions about our careers, and I will have time to answer that at the end. But 
just some um, some guidelines. And, and this first one is probably the most important one, and that is that service management is not standalone. There is a feeling in some uh, in some circles that all you have to do is an ITIL Foundation course, and you can do service management no matter where or when. That's just not true. If you're managing a service, if you're delivering or supporting a service, it really depends on the context in which that service is being provided. I don't know of any industry where you can just go in and work without having an understanding of that industry. So service management does not stand on its own. It's not just something that you do independently of anything else that happens in the organization. You have to understand the components that are used to deliver the services. So if you are doing IT services, if you're delivering or supporting or managing IT services, you need to know something about IT. Uh, you need to know something about networks. You need to know something about applications. You need to know something about how applications and networks fit together. You need to know something about security. Now, do you need to be a specialist in all those fields? No, but you do need to know how they all fit together. And you also need to know how they're being used in the organization that you're part of. Uh, again, we have a, a lot of examples of, of people managing service. They're, um, they're told to support devices, but have no idea who's using those devices and what they're using them for. So when a request comes in or something breaks, they have no idea what they're actually supporting. So we fix the devices that are broken or we restore the service, but we don't know what actually happened as a result. And because of that, the service that we provide is not always the best possible service. Uh, actually, and it's not the subject of this webinar, but uh, we've done some studies into, into service levels. And what we found is that when organizations or when service providers do not understand how the service is being used, they very often treat all requests as the same level of importance. And, and that means everything's priority one. So we try and we do our utmost to meet every request, whether it's an incident, um, whether it's a request for new service, or whether it's a request for an existing service, we treat them all exactly the same way. The end result is that we work way harder, but deliver a far lower level of service than is expected. As opposed to when we understand how the services are being used and what they're being used for in the business, it's much easier to say, well, that particular request or that particular incident is way more important than anything else that we're doing right now. So I'm going to drop the things that we're, that we're busy on. I'm going to focus all of my attention on that one thing, get that through, and then I can focus on the other things. And what's interesting about that is that organizations that are able to differentiate the, um, the level of importance of the work that they're doing based on what the, on what the service does, find that they have higher levels of customer satisfaction, but that their workload is actually much lower because they're not trying to do everything for all people all at the same time. Anyway, it's a little bit of an aside there, but it's an illustration of why it's so important to understand the, about the services, how they're being used in the organization. Another thing that's very important is how's your organization structured? Um, you know, do you, do you have engineers that are in a separate group or do they form part of a support unit together with the service desk? If you need to get something done, let's say, for example, ordering new components or, uh, uh, or modernizing some aspect of your infrastructure, what are the other parts of the organization that you need to work with in order to make that happen? Uh, it's not just up to us who are in the front line of providing service to know everything and to be able to do everything, everything related to that service. Sometimes we have to call on others within the organization. If we don't know who they are and what they do, it's gonna be very difficult. So service management, bottom line of that, it does not stand alone. Service management is a component or it's a dimension of what happens within an IT group or any service provider but it is not standalone. It is not the only thing that happens. You cannot just separate it out and put it on the front and say, 
well, their service management, you guys don't have to worry about anything else that happens in the organization. Comes to networking, you leave it to the networking group. Comes to database administration, you leave it to the database administrators. Come to cloud services, you leave it to the cloud service provider. It doesn't work like that. If you're managing services, you have to know how all of those pieces fit together and you have to have some level of expertise in those areas. Uh, in fact, the reason that ICL was written was not to create a service management department. It was to equip the people managing technology to be more service focused. So it was actually designed for the people who were in the engineering functions, who were in the system administration functions, who were in the supplier management functions. It was designed for them to become more service oriented. Uh, in more modern usage, we've kind of stripped some of that out and made it a specialization on its own. Uh, but if you separate that specialization out, you do not link it to the technical groups, then there is a problem. You'll see why I'm stressing this so much. This is probably one of the most important things to remember when deciding on a career in service management and which certifications to offer is remember that the ICL certification is just one component of the knowledge that you need to be an effective service manager. Now, contrary to popular belief, good technical, uh, good technical skills are essential, good products are essential, but neither of those things guarantee good service. Here's what I mean by that. You know, we just said that ITIL is an important certification for service providers, but there are some organizations who say, well, if technology is so important, and if the products are so important, why do we have to worry about the service management piece at all? As long as we've got good technology, good products like applications, we're great. The services will happen and we're good. Actually, that's not true at all. Uh, you can have the best products and the best technical skills in the organization. If they're not doing the right thing and being used in the right way, then they will not be effective. So that service management piece is essential, but it needs to be integrated into the technology pieces as well. So bottom line of that is that ITIL builds on technology capabilities to ensure good service. So what it means? Um, what it means is that ITIL is used for more than just the specialized ITSM areas. And a lot of the careers that you're seeking, a lot of the jobs that you're seeking will not actually have the word ITIL or ITSM in them because they're buried or not buried, but they exist within that technical layer or they exist within, uh, within one, one of the other parts of the organization. So when you're looking for a job or when you're building a career using ITIL, remember that there are more jobs, there are more careers than just those that have the word ITIL or IT service management in them. And I'll cover that a little bit later in this presentation. ITIL is designed to support career growth across multiple career paths. And I'm going to give you a, a, a slide which shows you that in a moment. Um, and we'll say the thing that makes it difficult about ITIL, and if you get onto the PeopleSort website, you will see there's not a nice, neat career map and a career path that's laid out with all the certification. And the reason for that is because there's not a one-to-one -one mapping between the ITIL exams and careers. Um, it's a very broad field, and it can be applied in many different ways in many different areas. So there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of careers that you can build using ITIL, but it's not a one-to-one -one map. So you'll find that one ITIL certification can be used for 10 or 20 different career paths. And I'll give you an example of, of how that works in a moment. Um, so that means basically, as you're seeking a career in technology management, especially digital technology management or IT management, you will need to apply the ITIL materials to your career path rather than using ITIL as a way to define your career path. I'll, I'll give you some ways of doing that in a moment. But I will say that ITIL is an essential component 
for many careers, not just the ones with the word IT service management or ICL in their job title. So let, let me show you what that means. Here's an example of the, uh, of the careers that are supported by ICL. There are five very broad categories of career that are supported by ICL. The first one is digital technology specialists. So if you're a network engineer, for example, there are components of ICL that will help you to become a more effective network engineer. They don't talk about network management. Uh, in fact, ICL doesn't cover network management as a discipline. It doesn't talk about um, many of the technology management disciplines. It doesn't talk about um, system administration. It doesn't talk about that at all. What it, what it requires is that you have been through a course or experience in which you have learned how networks work or how databases work or how applications work. Um, digital technology skills are a prerequisite for IT service management. Remember I said that if you want to be a good service manager, you have to understand the components that are used to provide that service. In our case, as digital technology or information technology specialists, those are digital technology components like networks, like applications, like, uh, like mobile phones and, and tablets and so on. So the, the first thing we do is we look at how to apply ICL in those digital specializations. So I may be end user support. That may be my primary role. And my whole job is around making sure that we have the right equipment in the hands of our end users, that it's configured correctly, that it, that it connects correctly. And that may be what my main career focus is. So how does ICL play into that? Well, ICL provides some very important disciplines which help you to become even more effective as an end user support engineer or as an end user engineer. The same is true of digital technology managers and leaders. Now, it's not the same set of skills, but if you're a manager, uh, such as an operations director, uh, or you may be, uh, you, you may be a, a system administration, you, you may be responsible for a certain platform like Windows, for example, um, and, and you manage the teams that do that, ITIL again can help. And I'll, I'll give you some examples of how that works. Um, ITIL also supports executives that are tasked with digital technology oversight. For example, the CIO uh, or chief digital officer, there is information in ITIL that can help them be more effective in those roles. Can they do it without ITIL? Yeah, you can do any of these roles without, without ITIL. Absolutely, you can do them. Question is how effective or can you make them more effective if you're using ICL? And the answer in all cases is yes, ICL helps to make them even more effective. The last two are very interesting because these two are ITSM practice managers and specialists and instructors and academics. Uh, their careers are directly linked to the ICL practices. So a practice manager may be, for example, service desk. I am responsible for the service desk. I manage the service desk. Therefore, the ICL service desk practice is directly mapped to my job. I may be a change manager or a change enablement manager. Therefore, the change enablement practice is directly linked to my job. Uh, the same in the instructors and academics. If I am an instructor, a trainer, for example, on an accredited training organization or a university faculty member, then the skills and knowledge that I need to teach ITIL are contained directly in ITIL. So the last two columns are directly based on ITIL and the jobs in those columns are directly based on what's in ITIL. The other three columns on the left, those are all uh, jobs or careers where we include ITIL as a component, but there are a lot of other things that we have to join together with ITIL. So I want to do a bit of a deep dive into each of these and uh, you can get the slides. So I'm not going to cover every single little thing on that. This is really more uh, to give you an idea uh, and a reference as to how ITIL can be used as part of career development. Here's one I've taken digital technology specialist and it doesn't matter what type of technology, you'll pretty much fit into these categories. So you could be in networking, for example. 
So you may be a junior networking engineer, senior networking engineer, networking architect. You can apply these categories more or less to every area of digital technology that we work with. At an entry level, the focus is on learning uh, the, the, the skills required for that role. So if I'm in the network, I need to understand basic configuration management or you know, how to configure network components, administrative tasks related to the network, and any troubleshooting. And I'll do that at a basic level, and I'll do that for some time until I become familiar with the concepts. It will really help me if I'm able to use some guidance from Michael. When I'm doing troubleshooting, incident management has some very helpful techniques and, uh, and and processes and and ways of managing incidents that, that will help me in my career and in my job. I, so I should really know about incident management. I should know about change enablement because if I want to make a change to network components, potentially those could impact the whole organization. So I need to understand something about change enablement <clears throat> and how we make changes within our organization. If I'm doing basic administrative tasks, I'm going to need to start learning how to monitor the devices on the network. So monitoring and event management as an ITIL practice can be really helpful to me to figure out how to do those administrative tasks. Now, ITIL won't tell me specifically how to configure a particular switch, but it will tell me how to manage the process by which I go about doing the administration, the monitoring, and any changes that need to be made and any troubleshooting that I have to perform. So again, ITIL doesn't make me an effective uh, network engineer, but what it does, it gives me tools and insights that help me and help make me more effective as a network engineer. Now, as you go through each of these levels, so from entry to junior engineer to senior engineer, notice that the combination of ITIL practices changes. So the more senior you are, the more tactical, and then the more strategic the skills are that you're going to need. So at a junior level, you're going to need to build on your troubleshooting to add in problem management, service request management, configuration management, and IT asset management. As an example, there, there may be a different combination depending on, on what you're doing. When you go to senior engineer, then I'm going to need to start doing things like planning for capacity and availability. I'm, and when I'm an architect, then I have to start looking at integration across multiple environments and multiple different systems, multiple te networking technologies, and so on. So architecture management, service continuity management, portfolio management, continual improvement become key there. So again, just an example, uh, we may not typically think of a network engineer being an ITIL role, but there are components of ITIL that are incredibly helpful to build your career as a network engineer. Let's move to the second column, which was that of managers um, and, and, um, uh, and leaders of, um, of digital technology. Uh, we can look at three levels. And again, this is just an example. You may have a different way of, of looking at this, but uh, there are typically three levels of management. Um, that is team leaders, first line managers, and middle managers. And your career may be, uh, maybe you want to become a manager and ultimately a, a VP or even CIO uh, or, or another executive within the organization. Well, again, ITIL can really help those managers to understand their task better and to execute it more effectively. So if you're a team leader, um, then you know, your team is likely to be doing things like resolving incidents, making changes, managing the asset, uh, IT assets through their life cycle, making changes. If you're the team leader, it's really important that you understand how your team is able to complete those tasks effectively so you can manage them more effectively. If you're a first line manager, then you're coordinating potentially multiple team leads or multiple teams. Um, and what you wanna be able to do there is make sure that you're working with the ITIL practice managers, such as change managers, to make sure that you're working out what the best way is to work with your teams to make sure that changes are made. When you're a middle manager, 
you're basically translating the strategy of the organization into tasks that are performed by the teams. Uh, how does ICL help you do this? Well, again, it, 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 there are these uh, there are these books in ICL called uh, the Managing Professional series. Things like how do you create, deliver, and support services? How do you create? How do you build and deliver value? How do you make sure that you're operating in a highly agile way uh, called high velocity IT? Um, and then direct plan and improve. All of those publications are helpful in equipping middle managers to be effective in context of digital technology. And that extends to the next uh, column, which is executives. So if, if you want to be a VP or a CIO, or if you are one, uh, then there are components of ICL that help make you a very effective executive. Things like strategy management, financial management, portfolio management, um, monitoring and reporting, continual improvement. Then again, those managing professional um, books that I mentioned. Um, now, the CIO needs exactly the same stuff, except they don't go into as much detail. Uh, a CIO plays more of a strategic leadership and a coordinating role. Uh, they need to know that you know what your job is. So they have a very good high-level understanding of what all the pieces are and how they fit together. But they need to know what kind of reporting to expect from the people who report to them. And they need to know what decisions need to be made based on that. Again, ICL really helps to provide that kind of structure and that kind of governance that build more effective CIOs and VP level um, uh, executives. Now, again, can they do that with ITIL? Yes, they can. Uh, and we have many organizations whose senior leaders don't use ITIL. I can tell you that in pretty much every case, in my experience, where we've actually worked with those leaders, once they've incorporated ITIL into their role, they become far more effective they sleep better at night because uh, they, they're not working as hard because they've, they've organized things more effectively. Um, but the point here is that ICL really helps to increase the effectiveness of executives within an organization. The final one that I'm going to look at, I'm going to ignore the column which related to trainers and uh, academics and the one which related to practice managers. Oh, sorry, I am going to do the one on practice managers. The one on instructors and academics, I'm going to leave because that's really more directly dependent on what course you're teaching. So, of course, whatever course you're teaching, you need the ITIL content to be able to do that. Uh, but ITSM practice managers, uh, the key there is you will need the information related to the practice that you're managing. So if you're an incident manager, you will need incident management. You'll need that qualification or that material. If you're a service desk manager, you will need the service desk material. Interestingly, if you're a service desk manager, you'll probably find that you need service desk and incident and probably service request management. As you can see on the second line there, we start building up there. The more senior you get, the more integration you need to be able to have between the different practices. So while on the entry level, if I am a junior and not even a junior analyst, I join a service desk because that's where I want to start my career. Basically, I'm going to start just doing the work of a service desk, um, basically administration, especially if I haven't yet been qualified in the various technologies that I'm supposed to be supporting. Well, then I'm going to learn the ropes by doing administration work, learning by listening to people on the calls, uh, getting mentored by people on the service desk. When I have a basic understanding of the technical components that I'm supporting, as well as the practices that I'm, I'm a part of, then I can get to junior analyst and start executing them. As I start executing those, I start learning additional practices as I interface with them. Uh, and as I become a senior analyst, I'm pretty much um, managing not just incidents, but I am interfacing with technical teams to do problem management. I'm interfacing with, uh, with the teams who coordinate changes. I'm interfacing with teams who do knowledge articles. I'm interfacing with teams that do uh, the service catalog and request management. 
So the more senior I get, the more I'm going to need background and input from other practices within ITIL. So which ITIL certification is right for you? And to help answer that question, I have three questions that you would need to answer. One is, do you want to be a technology specialist, i.e. do you want to become a network engineer or network architect? If that's the case, then you need to follow as your primary path the network technology training and certification that is available from whichever technology provider you're using. But you'll need to add in the ITIL components that are going to help you help make you more effective. Second question is, if you want to be an ITSM specialist, well then, which area do you want to focus on? Because that will determine which path of ITIL you follow. And the third question is, do you eventually want to become a manager or executive? Because then in addition to the technology and ITIL courses, you're going to need to add in some additional courses around things like, for example, managing people, uh, decision making, and so on and so forth. So with those three questions in mind, let's have a look at what I'm going to call the ITIL transit map. You know, you've seen subway maps or metro maps or bus routes in the city that you live. Uh, we have one for ITIL as well. And there are really three paths through ITIL. The first one is I want to be a practitioner. I want to be that person who is responsible for a practice uh, within service management, whether it's a service desk or incident management or anything along those lines. The second line is I'd like to be a manager. Uh, you know, I I, I want to I want to coordinate teams. I want to be responsible for for making sure that services are delivered effectively end to end. Or maybe you want to become a more strategic leader. Maybe you want to be the CIO or you want to be a senior architect within the organization that defines where the organization is going to go. Now, there those three routes exist within ITIL. The first one, let's look at the practice or the practitioner route. All of these start with a single course, and that is the foundation course. You'll see that foundation course on the slide has all three colors in it. So you'll start there. No matter what you're doing, you start with the foundation. But let's say we want to go the practitioner road. Well, uh, I can decide which practitioner path I want to follow. The first one is something called monitor, support, and fulfill. It has to do with the operational aspects of service management. It's about monitoring devices to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's about being able to manage incidents. It's about being able to manage uh, requests for service when they come in. Now, the really cool thing about this particular subway or transit route is, as you can see, the line goes into two. You can either do the MSF course, which is a three-day course, that covers all five of these areas, or you may wanna go through the right-hand side of this and focus on one practice at a time. Up to you. Uh, question is how quickly you wanna do it and, 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 and what your specialization is. As an entry-level person on the service desk, maybe I'm just gonna do service desk and incident management. But then I'm probably gonna to want to add these, add some more into that. So. Uh, using the chart that I showed earlier, maybe I maybe uh, when I get to an, uh, a junior analyst level, I want to do the MSF. So I can switch, uh, I can go around this, uh, this track multiple times. Now, maybe my specialization is something a little bit different. Maybe I'm involved in things like service level management and continual improvement and managing relationships in the organization. Maybe that's where I want my focus to be. Well, there is a there is a line for you that does just that. Or the third line that you can follow is related to planning, uh, implementing, and controlling. Uh, and that has to do specifically with things like change enablement and release management. And it's 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 about making sure that services are created and delivered uh, as they should be. Uh, at a most senior level, if you're focusing on practices, you probably want to cover all three of these areas. Now, if you cover all three of them, that's great. There is actually a path for that. There they go. One more course called Create, Deliver, and Support. 
and you are automatically, that is the dotted line there, you're automatically awarded the practice manager designation. So that's the practice manager road. Those are the, that's the road that's directly related to things that are in ITIL. It's directly mapping a career based on the categories that are used in ITIL. The second path is the management path. Like there's a, another one. It's, uh, I wouldn't say that it's shorter, but it's probably a lot less complex. Uh, and that is, if you want to be a manager, you need to know how services are created, delivered, and supported. This is not only the interface with the practices, but it is also a major interface with the whole DevOps and agile parts of your organization. They're very important, and we need to know how to map to them. And that happens within this purple circle as well. We have direct plan and improve, which is all about the coordination and management of service management. And then the two sitting at the bottom, there's high velocity IT that talks specifically about DevOps and agile methods and how we apply them. And then drive stakeholder value, which is about how we define services in the first place and make sure that we're meeting customer expectations. Each of those four books, by the way, or four certifications are based on a different combination of practices. So if you go through the manager road, not only are you getting a perspective from a management point of view, but you're also getting a perspective on how to coordinate different practices that uh, need to be in place to achieve uh, what you're doing. Now, if you achieve all four of those purple things, if you stop at all four of those stations, you are then automatically awarded the designation managing professional. The final leg is the executive one, and that is where we add digital and IT strategy. So to do that, we have direct plan and improve and digital and IT strategy. And if we achieve those two, we're automatically awarded the title or the designation strategic leader, and you'll get a certificate to that effect. But what happens if you achieve all three, PM, MP, and SL? Well, you must be some have some kind of mastery over this information. Well, and as a result of that, of course, we award you the ITIL Master. Now, the ITIL Master does not imply any practical application. It's not an experience-based uh, designation. It is purely based on the fact that you've been through and stopped at all of the stations. I say all of the stations. You only have to have stopped on one of these green branches. So either PIC, CIA, or uh, sorry, CAI or MSF. You don't have to do all three. Only one of those three uh, is necessary for the practice manager designation. So that'll give you some idea of uh, which practices you're going to need or which certifications you might want to focus on. Now, if you are a, a technical professional and you want to stay as a technical professional, you do not want to become an IT practice or an ICO practice manager, by all means, what you want to do is look at the list, especially of the practices and the managing professional and see which of those are most applicable, which of those will help you most in your current level of career development and choose those. You don't have to do all of them. They're the ones that are going to help you become more effective in your technical specialization. And I've given you an example of that in one of the previous slides. Okay. Um, so how do you grow your career in your current organization? Uh, I want to just share this with you. I'm, uh, those of you who've been at this for a little bit longer will know this already. Those of you who are just starting out on your careers, just to let you know, it's very rare to start with a defined career path and follow that through to the end and, and that's your whole career. Usually uh, career paths follow a combination of, here's what I wanna do, I'm gonna become a network engineer, I wanna become an idle practice manager. And then something happens in the organization and they say, well, yeah, that's really cool, but we also need you to do this. And before you know it, your career is kind of taking a little bit of a turn. You may find that your career will take several turns based on what your organization needs at the time. So if you want to stick to a predefined career path, 
then what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself moving organizations so that you keep doing the same thing every single time when you move organizations. For those of you who um, are going to stick around in your career a lot longer, you're going to find that your career will take some turns. Again, ITIL helps to do that because it allows you to align every change in your career with a different set of practices that may be able to support you. But to help you through this, um, I, I'm going to apply the ITIL guiding principles. And the first one is start where you are. So first question is, I, I want a career in ITIL or I want to use ITIL in my career. Well, how does your organization use ITIL? Uh, do they just pay it lip service? So everybody goes through foundation course, but nobody actually does anything in service management. Well, if that's the case, um, you know, your career options with ITIL or IT service management are a little bit more limited. You're going to find yourself moving and tending more towards a technical specialization. If you have some operational in, uh, practices in place, but nothing more, for example, just incident problem and change enablement, uh, that limits your options. Uh, maybe you want to grow your practices to something new. Uh, I'll cover that in a, in a slide later on. Uh, what if your organization is only using practices that are based on an ITSM tool? So my organization has implemented ServiceNow or Freshdesk or something else, and we're only using those ITIL processes that are support practices that are supported by that tool. Well, again, your options are a little bit more limited. You'll tend to find that most of your training, most of your career development is based around the tool functionality. If you want to break out of that, you have to focus more on the big picture of what is offered in ITIL, so more on the strategic components. Second question is, is there a service management office in your organization? And what is the role of that service management office? Some service management offices are actually organizations that run service management within the organization, and they offer a huge amount of scope for career development. Other service management offices are really just a form of a project management office. So basically, all they do is they exist only to implement the next uh, ITSM tool and a couple of different practices, and then they shut the service management office down. Well, in that case, you know, you may want to use that in the short term, but then figure out how you're going to jump your career to something a little bit more longer term. And the other question there is, do you want to manage a practice or do you want ITIL as a part to help you make your technical or management role more effective? Those questions will help you understand which career path you want to follow. The second guiding principle is to focus on value. And in, in terms of deciding which practices to which exams to take, which certificates to take, the main answer there is what is going to be most valuable, not only to you, but to the stakeholders in your organization. The fastest growing careers, the best careers are careers that show value, are the ones that are helpful to key people in the organization, key people being your manager, number one, and number two, other stakeholders that you work with to provide services every day. So what's most valuable to your organization? If service management is not valuable to your organization, then you have a choice. You either have to help them see that it's valuable or you have to craft your value proposition in a way that makes sense to the organization. Value proposition meaning the business case for you to get certified. What are your manager's objectives and what are their manager's objectives? If you want to grow your career, you need to make sure that you understand those objectives. Now, I understand managers come and go to some extent, and maybe the next manager won't have the same objectives, but you should always be on the lookout as one component of career planning. What are your manager's objectives today and how might they change in the future? The next question is, who will benefit from the work you do and how? If they can be on side in supporting your career plan, that will help you grow your career even faster. So you're not only got your manager's support, but you've got the support of key stakeholders around the organization. It's very important when you're putting your career plan together to be able to demonstrate how that career plan will benefit each of the stakeholders that you've listed. Don't just assume 
that your organization is responsible for, for defining career paths and you need to stick with their career paths. I can tell you right now that those career paths, they're there, they're used, but they, you know, when things change or when they need something from you, suddenly the career paths disappear and you've got to be able to demonstrate that you're going to deliver what they need you to deliver when they need you to deliver it. So understanding the stakeholders, understanding your manager's objectives and monitoring them as they change and aligning your career objectives so that you're demonstrating value to them is absolutely important here. And again, your manager is key. And a lot of the times, our managers don't really have the same idea of what our career should be as we do. But it's really not a good idea to manage your career by stealth. Like, I'm not going to listen to my manager. I'm just going to kind of do this course on the side, and then I'm going to confront him or her with it and say, I've done this. Now you need to give me a raise. It doesn't work very well. I, I know this from bitter experience. Um, so better to work with your manager. Maybe they won't support your ideal career path. Um, but if you share with them what your aspirations are, and then they can share with you what their objectives are, and you can you can negotiate some middle ground, which gives you the ability to grow your career and perhaps explore some areas outside your career, but as long as you're as long as you're meeting their expectations. Uh, and of course, if you do that, there's more you're more likely to attract funding for uh, for your goals. But always remember, it's a sales job. Uh, if you want to grow your career path, you have to sell the idea. As I say, no organization is going to come to you and just present you with these magnificent opportunities and career paths. Yeah, to some extent, they'll make them available to you. But if you want to grow your career, you have to sell yourself and you have to sell your objectives to these stakeholders. What if your organization does not have ITSM at all? There's three options for you. One, grassroots. I don't recommend this. It's, it's how things were done in the past. So basically what you do is you, uh, you kind of um, take your current role. There's no ITSM. So whatever your current role is, and you say to your manager, look, I'm going to include some ITSM components in my role. It'll make me better at my job. And then you work underground with some colleagues in the organization to try and figure out how you make the program more formal. And then over another two years or three years, somehow you start getting some service management initiatives going. It's not a great idea, um, mainly because it takes a long time. And secondly, because it never works out the way that you think it's going to work out. Um, and, and very often, yeah, maybe in an unpleasant way. So I wouldn't recommend that first way. It's possible. It's an option. Um, and, and some of you, maybe that's the only option you have right now. That's fine, because worst case, you can switch from that option and things don't work out. You can switch to looking for another job, which is option three. Option two is a more feasible one. And that is that you become the champion for service management or find somebody who will become a champion for service management. You work with key stakeholders to form a program and you tie your career objectives to that program. It's much more effective. It, it's quicker and you get more support from leaders once they see the need for service management. Again, you may not be able to sell the whole of service management to start with, but you may be able to sell some key ideas of service management. Hey, let's get some formal incident management together. You know, we've, we've got terrible customer sat uh, on, on fixing stuff. Let's put some incident management together as a formal program and let's see what happens. It works. Wow, great. Okay, now let's look at problem management or change enablement. So grow that more formally, become the champion. Option three is the last resort. If you cannot grow the career you want within the organization that you're currently working in, you've got two options. You either switch your career plan or you seek some organization that will employ you in that career path. Okay, now time for the second poll. And the poll here, uh, which Tiffany will bring up, is what challenges are you facing in implementing idle practices? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to... Uh, just to fill that poll out.
And for anyone who puts other, we'd love to hear what those are. And you can feel free to drop those in the chat. Be great to understand as well. Thanks, Tiffany. And of course, these uh, craftily are also obstacles which prevent career growth. Do we have results yet, Tiffany, or are we still waiting for some people to fill those out? We have about 50%, so we'll give it just a couple more seconds. Cool. And Alfredo says he doesn't see the poll. Um, is anyone else having difficulty seeing it? Well, I think we have a pretty good, oh, he's got it now. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to yeah, go ahead and it. end it, and we will share the results. Cool. There you go. Lack of understanding vital principles. That's That's a big one. You know, you're trying to grow a career in service management and your organization doesn't get idle. It's tough. It's really tough. So again, we go back to those options, you know, um, you know, I, how, you, how are you going to sell this? And I would certainly recommend option two. Uh, work within the current objectives of your organization and show them how service management or ICL is going to help make them more effective. It's the best way to work. Um, okay. Uh, I see there are some questions coming in. I am going to get to those um, at the end of this. I've left some time. So how do I use ITIL certification to apply for a new job? Again, two questions. Do you want a job in a formal ITSM program? Or do you want a job where you can use your ITSM skills as part of a technical or management role? That will determine which kind of jobs you're looking for and how you apply for them. So if it's an ITSM specific job like service desk, incident management, change enablement or change manager, um, they'll be listed as an, under that name. They'll use the same name as an ITIL practice. And if you're applying for that job, then you will put your ITIL certification first and foremost. Yes, I'm qualified to do the job of change manager because I have change enablement, I have release management, and I have IT asset management, and I have IT configuration management. I've got those certificates, so I will be a really good change manager. That's pretty straightforward. Um, so often these jobs, you'll recognize them because they're part of a service management office, or they're part of the service desk, or there could be something called an IT governance office or something along those lines, but there's a unit that manages service management practices or that consists of service management practices within the organization. The advantage of applying for this job is, as I say, it's immediately specific to ITSM. You take your certification, you showcase it, you present it first and foremost, I'm qualified for this job and I have this experience. The disadvantage with these jobs is that they are limited to a specific subset of practices. So it's unlikely to find a job that covers, you know, five or six or seven different practices. If, if you want to move into IT management, for example, it, it's a good starting point, but you need more. Um, also, what we found is that compared to the number of IT jobs, the number of ITSM jobs is much smaller. So you're limiting yourself to a subset of jobs. And also bear in mind that when you get into one of these jobs, you're going to be focusing on that practice or that cluster of practices. You're not going to be involved in the broader mission of IT and uh, you know, making decisions together with the business. You're not going to be involved in those product groups. You will play a very specialized role. Now, that may be something you really want to do, and that's great. Then that's not a disadvantage. That's definitely an advantage for you. But it all depends on what your objective is. Now, what about jobs that are ITSM, but they don't say so? For example, um, we have a lot of digital technology jobs that include ITSM practices. They don't always say so in the job description, or they may be buried in the eighth or ninth bullet point. But if you look through those jobs, you'll find that what you've done in service management is actually relevant to them. So, um, for example, uh, you may have some financial management aspect. Uh, in, in the job. There may be something related to availability and performance management of a particular uh, set of technology. Maybe there's some service design and architecture work. And this is especially true when you're working together with DevOps teams and product teams. 
Uh, and so DevOps and service management work very closely together in some cases. There may be an opportunity there, but they don't call them ITSM. Um, portfolio management, where you're looking at um, you know specific combinations of service and architecting those services and mapping those services. Also, when looking for those jobs, don't just look for ITSM as the keyword. Look for the background, your technology background. You may find that there's a really good ITSM job uh, as part of cloud architecture or as part of network engineering or as part of security management or as part of data, uh, uh, data management. Um, you look at the job description and you'll when you look at it, you'll see the bullets are really describing a lot of service management kind of things. In that case, it really is a service management job, but it is part of a technical specialization. So don't don't forget those when you're looking for a job. Uh, and and in, in, in applying for that job, again, what you will do is use your ITIL certifications. This time, though, instead of showcasing them up front, you may want to put them down third or fourth behind your technical specialization certifications. But just as a reminder, all technical specializations, especially at a more senior level, are going to require some advanced ITSM practice skills. Um, whether they say so in the job description or not, you being able to articulate that in the interview and saying, yes, I can do this job, but over and above that, here are some important things that need to be done for this job to be successful. For example, availability management. Here's how I can use my knowledge about availability management to make sure that this uh, that this network is going to be fantastic. Some final comments, and really, it's uh, not really comments. I'm going to get to the Q and A, but I did want to just put poll number three up, um, and that is really just a bit of feedback in terms of why you joined this webinar. Uh, so that, if need be, we can follow up as necessary. So I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. While you fill those out, I'm going to pull the questions up over here uh, so that I can read them. Okay. Is there a self-learning license available? Yes, there is. Um, it is possible on the PeopleCert website or through New Horizons, you are able to get self-learning licenses. Um is there any benefit of ITIL certification for a project manager? Actually, that's a really good question, John. Um, you know that the second biggest group of people who take ITIL Foundation is project managers. And the reason for that is very similar to the, the argument I used for, um, for service managers. You want to be a good service manager, you have to know the components of the service. You want to be a good project manager, you have to know the teams that are working on the project and what they do. So having ITIL is actually a very helpful component of, um, uh, um, of project management. It's, it's actually a very, a very strong supporter of the project management uh, profession. Okay, we see the results of the poll there. Thank you very much for that. Um, now I've lost my questions. There we go. Um, under ITIL Foundation, uh, Forrest, you asked the question, uh, could you take a few courses or the entire packages? Um, yeah, very few offer single classes. Uh, there are some. You'll have to look around a little bit, um, get onto the, uh, onto the PeopleCert website. The problem with that is, uh, let me put it quite bluntly, when you do the individual courses, you get the individual certification, but a lot of people find it a little bit quicker and more cost-effective to do the five-in-one, the three-day cluster, which covers all five. Um, but there are there are ways in which you can do that. I think uh, get a hold of your New Horizons uh, contact and find out from them. Uh, they will be able to advise you on this. You can also do that through self-study. Um, okay. If you are an IT support manager who does not have any experience with ITIL and does not have an ITSM tool, oh, absolutely cool. CJ, what a great question. What a great, uh, in a way, frustrating position, but what a great position to be in. This is where you have the opportunity to establish something. You already have that support management role. 
now is your chance to take that and give it some real structure and and direction and really really stamp uh your mark as an IT service management professional on that i would suggest that you start just by taking an ITIL foundation course and if you're in IT support the practice manager courses are probably going to be your most effective way of kind of getting that structure in place. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Um, start with the ones that are causing you the most problem. My guess would be it would be in the incident management, monitoring event management area, followed by the change enablement area. So those two groups of, of uh, certifications would probably be a good starting point for you. Okay. Uh, thanks for comments there. Ah, there you go, uh, Kimberly. Um, foundation course, uh, that was probably version three that you did. And is there a refresher for you? Um, I, I would um, I would recommend, uh, you know, the, the, the foundation in ITIL 4 is quite different to the foundation in ITIL 3. The practices are are close but updated. But the foundation course has a bunch of new concepts in it. And they're pretty important concepts because they talk about how IT is managed in a digital, uh, as opposed to where you have a centralized IT service provider in a modern organization, you have service providers or you have digital technology managers spread throughout the organization. So the ITIL 4 Foundation really addresses more of that modern way of working, that modern organization structure. Um, my recommendation was don't just do a refresher, but really just take the course. Again, you can do that through a self-study. Um, I know New Horizons has a, a bunch of programs. In fact, I'm going to put the dates of their next courses up in a moment. Um, but I, I would certainly recommend that you that you do that, um, that you take the take the course. Uh, the other side of that, if certification is important to you, it, it gives you the most up-to-date certification as well. Not essential. If certification is not essential for you, you can do some self-reading on that, but I would certainly update your skills on that area. Okay. Um, great. And Tiffany has uh, given you some further resources in the chat. Please take a look at those. It looks like we are right at time. There you and go. Um, that was some really great questions and really great information. So thank you so much, David. Um, and if you need any more information on this topic, please visit newhorizons.com. I dropped the link in the chat, uh, as well as a free resource that we have a download on the ultimate guide that has uh, more information on the structure of the ITIL 4 framework and exam prep tips and strategies and some test taking and sample questions as well. So thank you so much. And again, we will be sharing this recording with you via email. So take a look for your inbox in the next um, day. So everyone, thank you again, David, and enjoy the rest thank of your you. day. Thank you for joining us.